We need to see more women in leadership positions because I know they will deliver. This is Botswana, the country where woman is king. One of the things I noticed while growing up in Africa is how few leadership roles are occupied by women. And I've always wondered why it was this way. A female should not be president. Can women lead? And if they can, why are most leadership positions given to men instead? On my journey to find answers to these questions, I traveled to Botswana, one of the few countries in the world where many women lead, and I had a conversation with six women who are leaders in their respective industries to see if they could shine more light on why Botswana's style of leadership was very different from other parts of Africa. And this is what they had to say. In Botswana, women play a very critical role in the development of this nation. And Botswana women have been pushing for spaces. Women can sit at the table. I've never felt as if I'm being judged for being a woman. Men are great, strong. We are also great and strong. I've always wondered why there's doubt that a woman can run a country. I first spoke with Honorable Peggy Serame, who is the Minister of Finance and one of the most powerful women in the country. So how does it feel like to be the first female Minister of Finance? To be honest with you, the first thing when I was appointed for me was like, yeah, I know I can do the job. So that wasn't even an issue. But uh, interestingly, there were questions that were being asked again by society to say, can she do it? We think it's a men's job, but I had no doubt in my mind that I can do it. I'm going to make sure that I leave a mark. I would like you to tell me a little bit about yourself. I actually grew up in a very loving environment. My sister-in-law loved me as her own. So I went up to my A-levels in Zimbabwe and I was also successful. So I became a leader at a very young age. My first encounter or activity that I did that gave me a bit of money was makeup. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, wow. I was very young at the time. but. Because life happens, things happen in life. I was married before and been married. I was in a very abusive uh, marriage mm -hmm. to an extent that I lost everything. I was raised by, especially by my mom. She taught me at a very early age that I can be anything that I want to be. And I also was under pressure because my brother was like the smartest. My big brother was the smartest. So she would be like, your brother, follow him, follow him. And I would really follow him and really do well at school. As you were growing in your career, did you face any problems because you were a woman? I found the environment, truly speaking, quite conducive. And I've never felt as if I'm being judged for being a woman and that I cannot enter a certain space because I'm a woman. And even where I worked for a male boss, I never felt that, oh, I'm being subjugated because I am a woman. Because the environment in Botswana is such that you are measured by your output. How important do you feel it is for women to have leadership roles in Africa? In Botswana, for example, women are more than 50% of the population. So if more than 50% of the population are not represented in leadership positions, you are denying that big percentage of the population that opportunity and that responsibility. So it's something that I think we need to have deliberate policies, deliberate laws and strategies to ensure that we get women to leadership. And that will not only take uh, developing them in terms of capacity, but also looking at what are some of our cultural norms and our traditions that have really been a barrier to women taking up leadership positions. During Apathia, a great deal of Botswana men worked in the mines and in the farms in South Africa. And they were often gone for extensive periods of time, which means that a lot of households were left to be led by women. The major jobs back then relied a lot on physical strength. And with the introduction of machinery and different technology, that means that there was no longer a need for physical capacity, but more mental capacity. The leadership of women, that transcended into the economy. And this is why ultimately a lot of Botswana's economy is influenced and shaped by women. The thing that I love about being a Botswana woman and about Botswana is that when I watched the movie that has Wakanda, I was like, that is Botswana. We mourn the loss of our king, but do not think for a second 
that Wakanda has lost her ability to protect our resources. And what I love about, you know, the narrative of who we are as, as, as Botswana is that Botswana women are just so amazingly brilliant. And Botswana women have been pushing for spaces and they've been occupying spaces. And Botswana women are indeed the voice of reason in a lot of ways. Women naturally are, I would say, natural. And if I relate to an economy, an economy is not just a bubble, it's made up of many facets. And if you look at just how women in Africa are natural, are actually breadwinners, and most families are actually women-led, that is the current situation. So they have been leaders all their lives, and we need to be deliberate about making sure that in the African context, they are given that opportunity to lead. It's quite important because, like I said, we bring a different perspective and it's generally more about teamwork, there's more consultation. That is the kind of culture that we have. We need to bring up our girls to believe that they can enter any space and it's okay. What I've learned in my leadership journey as well is that, you know, men are not afraid to enter spaces. That's what all of us as women need to do more of. If you look at a family, if you look at a home, in Siswana they say a woman is the one who builds a home. And that's very true. Now, I've always wondered why then when it comes to leadership, there's doubt that a woman can run a country. And look at where women are leading. They're doing an amazing job. Men are great, strong. We are also great and strong, but we bring different flavors into it. What we seem to be missing is this one-sidedness to say, just because men have done it in the past, let's just keep it that way. But I think we are missing what I bring into the equation. In most parts of Africa, for example, like Nigeria, where I'm from, there's constant pressure on young women to get married and to like raise children. Do you have that pressure here too? There is generally no societal pressure for people to get married. If it's there, it doesn't also then exclude that you don't do well in your career. The girls, yes, they may want to get married, but they also equally want to be successful. So the more exposure the girls in Nigeria see of women doing both and being successful, Successful, I think that's the only way to break the barrier. So Botswana, where woman is king, what does that phrase mean to you? Botswana woman is king means that in Botswana women play a very critical role in the development of this nation. And it starts right from the family. In Botswana, because of our, some of our traditions, our norms and our culture, a woman plays a very special role in building and making the family. Not that men don't have a role. So it comes even from there. And interestingly, even in leadership, I think we've seen more and more women now taking up a space and leadership roles which is very encouraging and I must say that also where you've seen women being given positions of authority and responsibility they have excelled. You took certain decisions that you then realized that either some people just told you point blank that you act like a man. We've been given similar opportunities like the boy child in terms of access to education and as well as if we look at our property rights, I can go and apply for land oh, wow. without necessarily asking for permission from either your husband or partner. If we just look at opportunities given even in the corporate world, it is not just for men. Women can sit at the table. So I strongly believe that our government has made it deliberate and was intentional in making sure that the girl child, the woman, is actually king. What would you say is the most important skill for success? If you are not ready to be downtrodden, if you are not ready to be spoken of in ways that are very unfair and very unjust, then you are not ready for success. Put your focus on what it is that you are trying to achieve. Don't do business when you are desperate mm -hmm. for money because you are bound to fake. Patience is key and also being organized. What would you say inspires you? I come from very humble beginnings. So one of the things that really pushed me was I didn't like what I was seeing. My mom and my father worked very hard to make sure they provided for us. But I knew that education was the key to get my family and myself out of that place to a different place. It has always pushed me to say, you know what, I know that we can be different. I know that I can make a difference. 
the strength of the woman. Women really inspire me. I see a woman successful. It helps me sometimes when I see women beating each other down. Waking up every day is about making a difference. And in anything that I do, it has to be purpose driven. What would be your advice to a lot of young women in Africa who are watching this and probably inspired? As a woman, I don't believe in being given things on a silver plate. You need to prove yourself. You need to develop yourself. And you need to believe in yourself for people to believe in you. Even when people have doubts, if you deliver, the results will speak for you. If you had to pick one thing and change one thing about Africa, what do you think you would change? Get rid of the borders, because the borders limit us. I should be seeing you as my brother, mm. and therefore someone who can come here and enhance my economy, and I should be able to go to your space and do the same, and we become one nation, one Africa. We need to see more women in leadership positions, because I know they will deliver. African dynamic is not even one of uh, colonialism or one of uh, capitalism. I think it's one of leadership. I think if African leaders really could put the you know, money where the amount said, Africa would be a totally different place. Africa is just short in terms of leaders that are not you know, self-effacing, leaders that are not looking at self, leaders that are not absorbed with self. I think the real, real problem with Africa is leadership. Let's look at our education system, right, and reflect on whether it's producing the right skill set. I'm not talking about academic academic education, I'm talking about what is normally called soft skills. I would say, let's do less talking. It's more about action and execution because we have everything in place and everybody is looking at us. Everybody comes to us for these resources. Why can't we execute and, and implement? There are a lot of things that we can do to improve the lives of the people in Africa. We have the resources, we have the talent. We need to organize better and ensure that we provide the solutions to our own problems. Over time, Botswana has been able to transition from one of the poorest countries in Africa to one of the richest. The economy of Botswana is currently one of the world's fastest growing economies, averaging about 5% per annum over the past decade, and this change has been influenced by the key roles women have played in the country. The country has been tapping into other sectors such as the automotive uh, sector, tourism, agriculture, uh, freight, logistics. I believe women bring fresh perspective and solutions to problems. They see things differently in a way men just can't. They also have innovative ideas that can change the course of the entire society for the better. Women leaders are a fundamental requirement of the 21st century and I will implore all organizations to take care of empowering women in leadership and various administrative roles as this will lead to a better world for us all. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.